Okay, in this second lecture on magnetics, I'm going to talk to you about uh, how to make some very simple eyeball interpretations of uh, magnetic anomalies. And um, that's going to um, also affect uh, how we will decide to do surveys uh, to record those magnetic anomalies and uh, uh, hoping to uncover uh, particular structures. So this um, uh, lecture is going to be based on really just a few figures um, that are in the uh, magnetics overheads PDF, and uh, here we are on the on the first page. Um, and uh, now I'm I'm assuming uh, you know for this class that uh, for 492 692 that you've already had the uh, material on magnetic modeling that uh, Bob Carlin gives in. Uh, uh, GPH 333. Um, I do know that uh, many of you haven't had that, and um, so uh, uh, this is kind of an explanation as to why I'm going to give you this uh, sort of practical um, uh, view, uh, you know, very simple, very uh, non-quantitative, uh, of uh, how to look at magnetic anomalies and what you might expect to see in different situations, and. Um, uh, yet, uh, I'm not going to illustrate this with uh, any kind of uh, quantitative models or uh, um, you know, the uh, kinds of exercises uh, of modeling the, uh, uh, the nature of magnetic anomalies uh, from uh, various structures that you would have uh, completed in, in uh, Bob Carlin's class. Now, uh, if you haven't done that and you would like to investigate that, um, there is a uh, magnetic lab exercise uh, that's uh, not required. It's uh, extra credited in this class. And you can link to it from our uh, class syllabus webpage. So uh, I would urge anyone uh, who would like to uh, investigate this further to, uh, um, to take a look at, uh, at that uh, exercise. So um, we start with the, this uh, dipole nature of the Earth's field. Um, now this uh, dipole, you know, with this very simple, you know, north magnetic pole and south magnetic uh, uh, pole, where the field lines are perfectly vertical at the magnetic poles, and this uh, uh, magnetic uh, equator, where the lines of magnetic uh, force are perfectly horizontal, um, that's a, a theoretical concept. The Earth's field isn't exactly a dipole; it's just mostly a dipole. Uh, I forget what it is. Uh, maybe uh, 90, 95 percent is explained by a dipole, and there is a uh, dipole model, and it's uh, you know variation with time, called it secular variation, which uh, you can uh, refer to. Uh, that's actually the the dipole model that uh, we looked at in the last lecture from uh, NOAA, Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. Um, so uh, uh, you know, anywhere on the uh, on the Earth's field, this is where magnetics is is you know has this extra you know dimension of uh, complication over uh, over gravity. Remember, in in gravity, the uh, the direction of the uh, of the vector that uh, um, that is the uh, the vector that has the maximum gravitational acceleration. Wherever you are on the Earth, you know that that vector is by definition vertical, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, you realize that that vector doesn't always point to the exact center of mass of the Earth. It could point to some distance from the center of mass of the Earth. Uh, but th this um, you know definition that we very handily make uh, for gravity, that uh, the direction that the you know, gravitational line of force, the acceleration of gravity, points is vertical, um, is is absolutely not true in magnetics, and so we have to think about the the shape of this dipole field whenever we're thinking about uh, how to interpret a magnetic anomaly or even how to take a structure like the fault uh, that we're going to measure this year uh, out in Schurz and uh, how to uh, how to try to characterize that fault with uh, Magnetic surveying. We've got to think about the uh, the global dipole field and the direction, which is not going to be vertical because we're 
we're not you know anywhere near the magnetic uh, uh, poles. Um, uh, we've got to think about that vector direction of the magnetic field. So um, here's a, a, a diagram that breaks down that vector into different components. So we have a um, uh, this uh, big uh, black filled arrow, um, which is labeled F, is the uh, um, is the uh, the direction of the magnetic field line and. Uh, uh, this is uh, laid out pretty much as it is in, in northern Nevada, where you have, uh, uh, OK, you, you take the projection of that direction up to the surface, right? So the projection to the flat surface is this, uh, this horizontal uh, magnetic line of force. That's the horizontal component. There's also a vertical component along the vertical axis right down there. Okay, The horizontal component of the magnetic line of force is the magnetic uh, uh, direction vector. Okay, uh, it has its uh, in northern Nevada anyway. It doesn't point north. You know, there are some places in the world where it does point uh, exactly north, uh, geographic north. You know, towards the North Star, but uh, not in not in uh, anywhere in the U.S. So um, it doesn't point north. Uh, it points about uh, eighteen degrees, uh, or no, I'm sorry, fifteen degrees east of north. Okay, and that angle is called the magnetic declination, and you see it, of course, marked on uh, on maps, and, and has to be adjusted, you know, whenever you use a magnetic compass, uh, you know, like the Bruntons you've been trained to use, um, and it has to be, uh, you know, the uh, magnetometer in your in your iPhone uh, will uh, also uh, point to north. Uh, that's because it knows. Where you are and what the declination is supposed to be at your location. So, and that declination has a secular variation, you know, that which uh, I've mentioned before, uh, and uh, the declination is getting to be less and less each year, uh, and that's actually because the the magnetic pole is uh, located in the uh, Can Canadian Arctic Islands and it's moving west by a considerable distance each year. So uh, uh, that's uh, that's why the declination changes, or one of the you know one of the effects of the, the change in the Earth's magnetic field. Now below that horizontal component of the magnetic field, uh, there's an angle down to the true direction. Right, the true direction in northern Nevada is pointing you know 15 degrees east of north, and then down about 60 degrees. I think it's 63 degrees. Okay, from the last lecture. Okay, so it's pointing more steeply down than it is uh, pointing horizontally, right? The vertical component is larger than the horizontal component, and uh, I'll, I'll, um, if you uh, played with the uh, the iPhones and the X sensor uh, application um, on the iPhones, uh, you could see the uh, the different axes of of the magnetic uh, uh, the magnetic field uh, easily represented on those. Uh, uh, in that app, so uh, I'd be glad to show you that again as well. Okay, so we have a uh, uh, magnetic inclination about 63 degrees uh, down, and that's toward the north but east of geographic north by about 15 degrees. Okay, and that's our situation in in northern Nevada. Um, and you know, here's some. Uh, um, you know some math you can use if you need to translate between uh, the inclination i, the declination um, d, the uh, uh, the total uh, magnetic uh, field, uh, the total field, right, which we're going to measure, uh, the total field strength, the horizontal field strength, right, uh, all that you can figure out with uh, this uh, you know simple uh, Pythagorean math here. Okay, so um, you know we can uh, we can make magnetic uh, measurements to uh, an accuracy of one part in ten to the fifth, um, and those uh, uh, and and uh, the the total magnetic field in northern Nevada is about fifty thousand fifty one thousand uh, uh, nanoteslas. So one part in ten to the fifth is uh, one nanotesla, which also has the name gamma. 
Uh, nanotesla is the SI unit. Gamma is accepted by most of the journals as an adequate unit, and I will accept gamma or nanotesla uh, in your uh, in your reports. Um, you know, at the magnetic equator, the uh, the field is uh, is small. The total field strength is is smaller, about thirty thousand nanotesla. And at the magnetic poles, uh, you know, up in northern Canada and and in uh, I think it's uh, East Antarctica, uh, the uh, magnetic field is uh, is strongest, about sixty thousand uh, nanotesla. And here's the location of the uh, of the uh, of the poles, um, the magnetic poles. Now these are uh, poles that are uh, um, uh, defined by uh, you know where the uh, uh, where the the, inc the inclination uh, reaches uh, the its steepest dip. And it ought to be ninety degrees, but it doesn't exactly do that. Okay, um, and uh, uh, you can see in this diagram uh, down here that. Um, the uh, the approximate dipole um, that's uh, you know a uh, uh, the solution of inver of an inversion you know to match most magnetic data but not all okay um, that's uh, that's got one set of uh, poles and um, then uh, you can go out in the field in northern Canada and find the uh, uh, the North Pole um, by uh, where the the you know, you could use your, your iPhone where the inclination is uh, ninety degrees. Okay, and that's um, uh, seventy five north and one hundred one west. So that's over the Canadian Arctic Islands, and uh, you know the uh, the dipole solution gives you um, you know which we call the geomagnetic pole, um, and that's a bit further north. You know, it's about three degrees off, a, a few hundred kilometers, four hundred uh, kilometers off. Uh, that's at seventy-eight north, okay, and uh, only seventy point nine west, right? So the, uh, you know, we can't quite get this. The, it's right, uh, you know, the even though uh, you know the dipole part of the field is uh, uh, is uh, uh, you know ninety ninety five percent the. Um, um, the uh, 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 the there's a quadrupole part, which is uh, making it uh, you know not exactly uh, uh, the dipole solution. Uh, dipole solution, you know, unless you're in northern Canada, the dipole solution is perfectly useful in in Nevada, and uh, so uh, you know we uh, we're we're happy to use the dipole solution, but uh, you know, some uh, um, some of our graduates, some of our uh, our department's uh, uh, people have uh, gone to work in uh, in northern Canada, and they have to they have to uh, be more careful uh, and uh, and use a, a local solution, not a uh, you know not a not the the global dipole solution. Also, here uh, it, it talks about the secular variation. Just to mention that it's uh, drifting westward by about 0.2 uh, degrees per year. Up there, uh, degree of longitude is uh, uh, less than uh, 50 kilometers, uh, uh, probably. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, we're we're talking about uh, five or ten uh, kilometers per year. So, uh, you know, not a lot. Not uh, 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 you know, that's. Uh, uh, there are glaciers that, that go that fast, but uh, you know, for a for a global uh, geophysical property, that's a, a huge and fast change. Okay, and the uh, you know you can see that the uh, dipole axis is inclined about uh, eleven degrees to the uh, rotational axis, which is true north. Now here's another one of these global maps that's just useful to keep in mind. This is the uh, the inclination. You've seen maps of the declination. You've seen maps of the intensity, and the secular variation in intensity. In the last lecture, here's a, ma a global map of uh, the magnetic inclination. You know, as of the '60s, right? Uh, and it is uh, changing, but not uh, not terribly fast. And so here, you know, we're up here in northern Nevada, and, and 
and you see it's about uh, 60 degrees, 63 degrees. Okay. Now, if you're um, uh, if you're in uh, the southern hemisphere, like in uh, uh, the mining districts of Western Australia over here, you know it's going to be minus 60 degrees. Okay. Which is why, uh, unless you've got a universal Brunton compass, you've got to reset your Brunton and put the weight on the other on the north side instead of on the south side, right? Uh, if you uh, if you go and work in Australia, so or South Africa for that matter, or uh, or uh, South America, okay? And you can see the the magnetic equator, right, where the uh, the inclination is zero. It's close, you know, in the in the Pacific, it's close to the the geographic equator. And then it takes the swing south through uh, southern Peru and western Brazil, and then goes north uh, into West Africa. And then uh, again, it's cutting pretty straight across, but it's uh, you know maybe five or ten degrees north of uh, uh, let's see, yeah, five or ten degrees north of of the uh, uh, of the geographic equator. Okay, so. Uh, We've got to keep our, our uh, you know wrap our heads around this uh, um, you know this varying inclination right and uh, varying declination um, and that really uh, has a has a big effect in, in how we interpret magnetic data and how we try to collect magnetic surveys. Okay, this map is uh, uh, it's another total intensity map, and again uh, you know we come to about in northern Nevada. 52 um, um, uh, nanotesla, and you can see over Brazil, the uh, the the um, the intensity is uh, reaches a minimum, only 24 nanotesla. Okay, as it should near the magnetic equator. Uh, and this is a. Uh, um, uh, you know, as the solutions for the the uh, this average Earth dipole uh, go on, you know, from uh, 1820 to uh, 1960. Okay, so 140 years. You know, the dipole has been uh, uh, the moment of the dipole has been falling uh, by almost 10 percent, and it continues to fall. And in fact, uh, right here in northern Nevada, the uh, um, uh, the uh, um, you know just in the last ten years the uh, the dipole the uh, uh, the total uh, the total field you know the intensity of the magnetic field here in northern Nevada has fallen by uh, by a, a couple of percent so uh, you know uh, another ten thousand years is it going to be zero well that's a very good question okay we don't know the answer to that yet uh, here's some uh, uh, locations of the North Magnetic Pole on a, on a little map here, uh, latitude 78 to uh, 82, uh, 83 north, and then uh, these are east longitudes. Uh, you know, 360 is uh, is at the Greenwich Meridian, so 320, 360 minus 320 is uh, that's uh, 40 degrees west. So in 1600 and 1650. You know, so far as navigators were able to determine the uh, the uh, uh, the North Magnetic Pole was was located uh, uh, at um, uh, you know only uh, only forty degrees west of uh, of Greenwich, so it was really uh, in, in Greenland at that time, and um, you know it was way up at uh, uh, at eighty. Almost 83 degrees uh, north latitude, uh, and it's uh, taken this uh, southerly path, and then since then a westerly path. Okay, so here's the 1980 um, uh, solution, uh, 1965 back here. So it's probably uh, continue, it's continued to move west in in uh, this time. Um, that's uh, that's definitely true. Uh, so now it's uh, what uh, it's at about. Uh, uh, 290. Uh, let's see, 360 minus 290. That's 70. That's you know minus 70 degrees, as uh, as is listed. That's only at uh, 78 to 79 uh, degrees north. Okay. Now I talked last time about uh, magnetic properties of rocks. So uh, 
skip over that. Um, so uh, we go and, and measure a uh, uh, we do a magnetic traverse, right? So it might be a linear traverse, or we might put a whole bunch of linear, you know, parallel linear traverses together, and uh, and make a uh, a magnetic map. Um, and and uh, uh, I showed you some magnetic ma maps uh, last time. We uh, we find anomalies on that map. You know, we we might uh, have a generally decreasing trend. Uh, with distance along the traverse, and so uh, we'll uh, we'll get rid of that, uh, you know, level out that generally decreasing trend, and then we'll have an anomaly. Okay, and um, uh, you know, one way to uh, uh, one way to to uh, uh, get rid of the trend is to uh, subtract the international field, right? Um, which might be part of that uh, part of that trend, okay? Um, and then we uh, we want to interpret these uh, these anomalies, okay? So uh, you know the anomalies may have different shapes, like different strengths, like different widths, okay? And um, uh, it is it is more tricky to figure out the magnetic effect of a subsurface body than it is to uh, um, uh, to have, to uh, figure out you know the uh, the gravity effects of uh, surface of of subsurface uh, density contrasts, okay. Again, because of this vector nature of the magnetic field, so the uh, the you know highly uh, the the more highly magnetized bodies which have the higher magnetic susceptibility, you know, a lava flow for instance, all right, it's going to get magnetized by the uh, the Earth's field and so then, um, uh, there's going to be this interplay between the uh, the Earth's field and what you see as an anomaly due to that excess magnetic susceptibility. Okay, there may be a magnetic susceptibility contrast, uh, and there's this method of uh, dipoles and and monopoles that um, uh, can be very helpful in in figuring out uh, what we really uh, uh, what we really have uh, in the uh, um, in our magnetic anomaly. Okay, so um, uh, consider for a second the uh, um, uh, here's the Earth on its side, the North Pole on the right, at least the North Magnetic Pole, South Magnetic Pole on the left, and um, so the the magnetic lines of force. Okay, uh, are uh, are going to be, uh, uh, you know, coming down towards the north magnetic pole. So maybe here we are in northern Nevada. We've got about the magnetic lines of force are diving in at about uh, sixty degrees, and, and also of course at the declination, you know, north fifteen east. So um, now here's a cross section. Okay, uh, in the northern hemisphere, this is the southern hemisphere is equivalent. Is over here. All right. And uh, this cross section is good for northern Nevada. We have the uh, the uh, ambient magnetic field, F ambient. That's the uh, applied field. Okay, due to the Earth's dipole diving into the surface. Here's the here's the surface. Okay, and causing any magnetic bodies. Okay, so maybe here we have a magnetic body to become magnetized. All right. Now when it becomes magnetized, it sets it sets up a dipole. All right, so the top edge of that magnetic body, right, the uh, uh, it's going to be uh, 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 magnetized uh, in a uh, uh, in a negative way, okay, and the other end of that dipole is going to be the positive one, right? So we have uh, you know the magnetic lines of force which are diving into the ground in northern Nevada. You know this is a north-south cross section, right? At least magnetic north oriented. Okay, so that's the strike of the cross section, if you will, the orientation of the cross section. Um, so uh, you can imagine little pluses, and they're going to attract negatives. Uh, and and what am I talking about? Pluses and negatives. These are think of them as monopoles. Okay, magnetic monopoles uh, may or may not exist, but they're certainly very rare um, because uh, 
you know, there's uh, uh, there's huge magnetic fields all over the universe. Uh, you know, if you could see the the magnetic field of Jupiter, the planet Jupiter, from uh, from here, you know, from the Earth, it would look larger than the Moon. Okay, uh, so the, it's a gigantic structure, and if if monopoles really existed, magnetic monopoles, then uh, you know those those uh, magnetic those huge magnetic field structures would be canceled out and absorbed by the monopoles. So if there are any magnetic monopoles, they're at least uh, rather rare. And uh, that, that seems to have held up for a while here. OK, so uh, you know, wherever there's a, a, a negative pole, monopole, there's got to be you know, the other side of the dipole, right, which is the positive monopole. All right? And so uh, the arrow points, you know, it's got a positive at the end of it. And so it's going to get attracted to a negative. So that's going to attract a negative monopole to the top of the magnetic body. And of course, then you got to have the opposite one at the other end of the body. But not, you know, the other, you know, where at the other end? Well, in the same direction, right? This magnetic dipole is going to develop in the same direction as the uh, as the ambient field. Okay. So that's a normal. Um, uh, that's the normal field. Okay. So uh, all right, you um, uh, now, now these uh, diagrams at the at the bottom here, they tell you what happens when you run over, you do your magnetic survey over a magnetic monopole. Okay, you have a, a negative pole here. You got in your your ambient field is attracted to it, and that's going to increase the field strength over the pole. Okay, and then uh, over the uh, uh, over a positive monopole, right? Then uh, uh, you get a little positive at the at the end of the arrow, and uh, that's going to be repelled from the uh, uh, the positive magnetic monopole, and that's going to decrease the total magnetic field. Right, so you get a you get a negative anomaly um, from the force of repulsion. Okay, so um, you know when you have a when you have a magnetized body. That's very thick, okay, and the uh, and the uh, the negative uh, um, the negative the the negative is close to the surface, right? That's how it's induced. That's normal magnetic susceptibility, okay. So um, uh, you know that negative is close to the surface. You get a big a big uh, positive anomaly, okay. At the other end of that monopole of, the, of that dipole, okay. At the bottom of the magnetic body, however deep that is, but it's deeper than the top, right? At the other, other on the other side is the positive monopole, and that repels, but it's further away, right? Further away from your magnetic measurement. It's a you know magnetics is a uh, potential field technique, so uh, you know the force between the monopoles is proportional to the dis one one over the inverse of the distance squared. So the uh, the positive monopole is further away, so you get a broader, right? Uh, the deeper, the the longer the wavelength, just like in gravity, you get a broader negative anomaly, and it's also smaller. Okay, you add those two together. This is the this is the monopole um, uh, method here. You add those two together, and you get your total anomaly. All right, and so uh, you know what this often looks like is a uh, you know the peak, you know, somewhat reduced, and with a gutter from that, right? The the peak is sharper than the uh, than the low due to the positive monopole, and um, and so the the low extends out beyond the edges of the peak. Okay, so uh, you'll get a peak and a gutter, uh, and often the gutter is on the north side, you know, for Nevada. Okay, so here's uh, here's the, uh, the crazy thing that happens um, at uh, at some some places. Okay, um, when you're at a low magnetic latitude, okay, at the magnetic equator, right, and at the magnetic equator in the eastern Pacific, there's uh, east-west uh, uh, spreading. Okay, and uh, uh, this is a map view. All right, so there's uh, you're looking down on on the magnet, magnetic stripes, okay, and uh, so there's you know a magnetic anomaly. 
that you should be able to see. Okay, uh, but the ambient field is uh, is going uh, is going straight north. You know, straight straight to magnetic north, and it's horizontal. And so you get uh, you know your positive and negative monopoles. Well, they're there, but they're you know the dipoles are horizontal. And you know, one side of this is way up here, and the other, the other end is way down there. You know, at the fracture zones, and over the uh, the middle where you're trying to profile. You know, it should be easy, right? And and here in section, right, we've got the magnetic, uh, uh, the remnant magnetization. You know, from the uh, reversed uh, lavas uh, that have been erupted at different times, right, down here on the seafloor. You know, some of them are pointing uh, back at us here, out of this section. There's a cross section here. Some of them are pointing into the board, and um, uh, but you survey over that, you get no anomaly. Okay, we're going to explore that further. So the the uh, uh, a north striking uh, fault or a north striking uh, uh, magnetic uh, anomaly. Okay, a north striking uh, magnetic susceptibility anomaly or a north striking uh, 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 remnant magnetization on anomaly uh, at the magnetic equator, right where the uh, the lines of force are horizontal, it's invisible. Okay, that west to east profile across, you know, at the magnetic equator, it's not going to show you anything. Okay, for a uh, uh, especially for north striking faults. Okay, we'll we'll look at that more. Okay, so uh, you know what you want to do is. Uh, uh, you want to, um, you know, you can figure out uh, where on your in your cross section you're going to get. You know, we'll have a line of uh, negative monopoles here, which will affect the. Uh, um, you know, if we have the magnetic line of force going uh, down, and and uh, you know, let's say we have a north uh, a north plane, uh, a north uh, observation, um, a north uh, striking profile, north trending profile. Then we'll end up with little magnetic ones over here. Some of those will be close enough to the surface to cause that that negative swing, that moat in the uh, um, in the total magnetic signal. And these are going to be dominated by those. Uh, you know, the top and south surfaces are going to be dominated by the negative uh, monopoles, and those are going to attract more strongly. So we'll get a uh, a positive anomaly above the south and. Uh, uh, and top sides, and then just off the north side, you know, some negative ones will come into view, and we'll uh, we'll see uh, uh, we'll see that moat. Okay, so uh, this is a, a really amazing uh, uh, compilation here. This is out of a, a Syntrex uh, magnetometer manual, um, and it's a yellow soft cover uh, a book that. Uh, I, uh, I've had around for some years. I can't find my current copy, but at least I made a copy, a, a really good scan of this particular sheet, this particular page here, um, because this is uh, probably the most help uh, that I've ever seen on, uh, you know, how to interpret magnetic anomalies from different areas of the world. Okay, so how do we uh, how do we interpret this? Um, you know, let's. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, this is that all important uh, legend, okay, that I've been uh, I've been talking about. So let me bring that uh, bring that up here, and uh, maybe I can enlarge it a bit more, so that you'll actually see it on the uh, um, on the the video, okay. So. For every anomaly, there are five curves given. Okay, and um, uh, and and you got to figure out where you are in the world, and which way your anomaly trends, and then which way you're surveying over that anomaly. Okay, and it's going to end up as one of these five cases. Okay. So, so here's the here's the deal. If you are at the north magnetic pole, then this arrow is going straight down. That arrow is the magnetic line of force, right? It's labeled F. That's the total field, the magnetic field. 
and it's going straight down. Okay. Now in that case, it's not going to matter. You'll get the same profile whether it's east-west or north-south or, or or what have you. Okay. You get the same profile, so uh, we don't need different directions. Okay. Um, now, what what if you're at the uh, what if you're at the uh, uh, south magnetic pole? Okay, the arrow is going to point up. Ah, well, you'll just get to, the anomaly is going to be flipped over. Okay. So uh, uh, now, you know, let's go over here, and uh, there's a particular model, and there are five curves given. Okay. Um, so we've got, uh, and the top one is where we are at the north magnetic pole. Okay. Uh, and then we'll get to the fifth one at the bottom pretty soon. All right. This is a uh, you know understanding this diagram. If uh, if you can understand it, then you can you can figure out how to do magnetics anywhere. Okay. All right. So um, uh, oh yeah, just want to illustrate. Um, you know this particular profile, this top one. That's if you're at the north magnetic pole. Okay. And. Uh, if you're at the south magnetic pole, then it's going to start out low, and then it's going to go high. Okay, it's just going to be the, you know, you're just going to flip the curve over. All right. So um, the second curve, okay, is if um, um, uh, is if uh, uh, you're at um, uh, you know, a place like northern Nevada, okay, and you're traversing in the magnetic north direction, okay. So um, uh, the uh, you know, and here you can see the the magnetic line of force is slanted toward the right, okay. And if you're in northern Nevada, it, it's it's and your traverse is uh, north on the right, okay. Then uh, you have the second curve. Okay, so there's the first curve. There's the second curve. All right, for this you know particular model, it has to be right next to the legend. All right, so this would be the south side of the of the uh, profile over here on the left, and the north side of the profile over here on the right. Okay, and um, the magnetic line of force is cutting down, uh, uh, you know, in the in the plane of section here, you know, at a, at its inclination of sixty degrees. Okay. Now, if you're in the southern hemisphere, right, uh, then you just have to reverse the directions. Uh, you know, north would be on the left, and uh, and south would be on the right. Okay. But I'm I'm not going to talk any more about the, the southern hemisphere because you know most of us are going to do our work in the northern hemisphere. Okay. Now, uh, it makes a difference now in northern Nevada. You know where the magnetic field is tilted into the ground. Okay. Uh, it makes a difference, right? The the second line is the traverse in a north south direction. The third line is a traverse in the east west direction. Okay. Very different. Very very different. All right. And um, uh, so. Uh, uh, what that assumes is that um, okay. Uh, so here's this uh, this fault, all right. And um, let me get that all that on the page here into the video, all right. So uh, uh, here we have a fault involving two units right in the middle of the of the page here of the of the movie here. Um, so we have uh, an increase across the fault. We have, an, and the fault is vertically dipping. Okay, you can see that. You know, we start with a with a magnetic susceptibility of K one, and then on the left side, the magnetic susceptibility is two K one. Okay, and um, if you're at the north magnetic pole, which is this first curve here, that fault can be in any orientation, okay. Any this fault has a strike, right? And we are we are looking down the strike of this fault. We're looking at a section. We're looking down the direction through you know through the section and in the direction of the fault strike, okay. 
and uh, whatever the strike of the fault at the north magnetic pole, the top curve, we get that same top curve. Okay, the the magnetic field is higher on the left, right? It's got a higher magnetic susceptibility, so the the ambient field is being augmented on the left, and it's not being augmented as much on the on the right. Okay, and uh, you know the 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 sort of median cross median median crossing here. That's exactly where the fault is. All right. So the um, um, uh, you know whatever the strike of the fault, okay, and and uh, you know the, our traverse right with this uh, with this uh, diagram here, right? We have cylindrical symmetry. Our traverse is perpendicular to the strike of the fault. Right, so our traverse is across the fault. It's in the perfectly cross fault direction. Okay, now we got to worry. You know, if we're not at the magnetic pole, which we are not here in northern Nevada. Okay, so that's cases two and three, right? Uh, lines two and uh, three. Okay, then we got to worry about. Uh, all right, where? Uh, where is the? Uh, uh, what's the strike of the fault? Okay, and and all right here our traverse. No matter what the strike of the fault, our traverse is perpendicular to that. So if it's a north striking fault in northern Nevada, okay, then um, we are uh, a north striking fault in northern Nevada. Okay, then we're looking north. Okay, and and when I say north, I mean magnetic north. Okay, uh, just to keep it simple. Okay. North, uh, a geographic north, and fifteen degrees east. All right, so magnetic north, and um, uh, and so our traverse is magnetic east west. Okay, our traverse is east west, and uh, because the strike of the fault is north, you know, once you know what the strike of the fault is, then uh, that determines it. All right, so. Um, uh, we have a north striking fault, and uh, our traverse is east west, and we're in northern Nevada. So, so you know, here's the uh, third line, uh, which uh, you know we have a, a north uh, a north inclined magnetic field, but it's it's you know the 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 field strength vector looks vertical in this section, right? If it's a north striking fault, okay, and you can see that that it's kind of a muted, it's a more muted anomaly. It's not as strong as it as it ought to be, okay? As it is uh, in some other directions. For instance, if this is an east striking fault, okay, then we have uh, let's say it's a west uh, striking fault. We're looking towards the west, okay? It's a west looking section. A little weird, sorry, but that puts north on the right and south on the left, okay? So in northern Nevada, okay, with a with a west striking fault. Then you see this really prominent anomaly, right? You're going across the fault, and you're you're going in the direction of the magnetic uh, lines of force, and you see a good anomaly. If it's a it's a north striking fault, your traverse is east west. You're not, you know, you're going from west to east, okay? You're uh, and you're not going in the direction. Your traverse is not in the direction of the magnetic field, okay? And um, and so it's a more muted uh, anomaly. Now you might have noticed uh, for the fault we're going to profile in Schurz, I have made the uh, uh, the magnetic uh, survey lines point um, they they point to in the cross fault direction. Okay, they're oriented in the cross fault direction, but they um, they're not pointing that far away from magnetic north. Maybe just uh, ten degrees. Uh, maybe twenty degrees east of magnetic north. So uh, I'm hoping to get uh, you know for this situation here, I'm hoping to get situation two with the prominent anomaly. Okay. Now, uh, uh, okay, back to the legend. All right. Uh, the fourth line. What is that? Okay. That's a horizontal line of force, and I, I'd better uh, uh, enlarge that for you again. Okay. So. The fourth line is a horizontal line of magnetic force, and north is to the right, okay, because the traverse is in the north-south direction. Okay, 
So we're at the where and where is the, the, the magnetic line of force horizontal? At the geomagnetic equator, of course. So, um, uh, but we can tr we can traverse north south or we can traverse east west, right? And um, and so uh, line five is also at the magnetic equator, okay. And the uh, uh, but with an east west uh, uh, traverse, then the uh, the magnetic line of force is is pointing in and out of the page. Okay, so let's look at the same fault model. All right, and on top is a north-south profile with horizontal uh, direction of uh, of magnetic uh, um, uh, line of force, and then this is a this this is a, a a magnetic anomaly line. You can see it's flat. There's no anomaly. You can see right, and that magnetic line of force. Is uh, it's coming is coming into your uh, it's a it's a west and east right west on the left east on the right and um, uh, and the magnetic line of force is going right into your screen uh, away from you okay and uh, that's amazing at the magnetic equator you know despite the the factor of two difference in the magnetic susceptibilities uh, because the uh, uh, the monopoles are located so far away. All right, you don't see any anomaly. Okay, you so for a a uh, a north striking fault at the magnetic equator, right? And where's the magnetic equator? Uh, like Brazil, Peru, okay, um, or uh, or uh, West Africa, um, or maybe Indonesia, close enough to the equator, right? In those places, uh, a north striking fault crossed by an east-west profile will show you nothing, no magnetic anomaly. Okay, uh, if you have a an east-west striking fault, then you can see an, an anomaly, right? Okay, so we would have south here and north here. The magnetic line of force is horizontal and it's in the plane here. Okay. In the plane, and uh, uh, and you would see a strong anomaly. Okay, actually somewhat stronger and sharper than what you see in northern Nevada, um, and not quite as not quite as plain as what you see uh, in um, uh, at the magnetic equator. I mean, sorry, the magnetic pole. Okay, so let me back out and try to explain this. Uh, uh, this page a little bit more. Okay, so what we got here are these five different types of traverses, right? Which are tied to, you know, the top one is always uh, uh, the top one is 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 always the uh, um, the magnetic pole. Okay, um, which is as you can see is usually the largest anomaly. Okay. The uh, the next one is uh, a north south a magnetic north south traverse in uh, northern Nevada, okay, with the inclined magnetic field, the, and uh, the next one is still northern Nevada with the inclined magnetic field, but it's an east magnetically east west traverse, okay, and the next one is a north south traverse at the magnetic equator, and the last one at the bottom is a east west is a is a east east west traverse, also at the magnetic equator. Okay, and look at this. the The lousiest place is is you know if all you have is east west traverses at the magnetic equator, uh, most anomalies you are not going to see. If that anomaly has a north south strike, like all these do, this uh, cylindrically symmetrical anticline. Volcanic flow, the dipping dikes, the gradually sloping surface, okay, the uh, the, the the vertical sheet, the uh, the wide sheet, okay, the uh, north striking fault uh, within one rock unit, you know, the offset, the north striking fault of two units, it's hopeless. East west traverses, north striking faults at the magnetic equator, are going to give you nothing, 
Okay, you've got to have a uh, um, a body that's more limited, like this sphere or this uh, narrow uh, intrusive, the, the stock or vertical cylinder. Those are the only ones, you know, that have north-south limits, right? So the, you know, the uh, the negative monopoles are going to be piled up on the uh, on the south side of the of the cylinder, and the positive ones are going to be piled up on the on the north side, right? So that uh, and that gives an anomaly, okay? Even in in an east-west profile. So uh, uh, that's the uh, that's the essential problem here, uh, uh, and the difficulty about being at the uh, magnetic equator. Okay. So um, let me next uh, try to illustrate this with the. Uh, uh, with this uh, sphere, okay. So we buried a magnetic ball bearing, and we survey over it in these different areas of the world, okay, in different directions, okay. So at the north magnetic pole, okay. Now at the north magnetic pole, the top of the sphere has the negative monopoles. The bottom of the sphere has the positive monopoles. The positive ones are further away, and so cause a broad low. The negative ones are closer to the surface and cause a sharp high. Okay, so uh, you get the sharp high with the with the moat around it. Okay, and notice the moat. It's it you know it's not drawn perfectly, but uh, it's pretty good. Uh, the uh, the moat is the same on both sides. Okay, uh, so at the north magnetic pole, you see. A uh, circular anomaly, and uh, it doesn't matter which way you you go. You know, as as long as the traverse is uh, centered over the sphere, okay. So it's a circular anomaly with a with a donut moat around it, okay. Um, all right, in northern Nevada, you bury the sphere, you do a north south traverse. You see this really sharp uh, magnetic anomaly. It's a transition with a, a big high and a small low. Right, the small low is from, uh, you know, so we have uh, tilted magnetic lines of force, you know, going down and to the right. So over here on the 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 underside of the sphere are the are the positive uh, magnetic monopoles, uh, but the north underside of the sphere and on the south top of the sphere are the uh, magnetic uh, uh, negative magnetic monopoles. So those. Negative magnetic monopoles are really close to the uh, surface, and so they cause this really sharp high. And then the uh, the positive ones are only on the north side, and they're uh, and they're further from the surface, so they cause a broad low. So the moat is on the north side. Okay, but look at what happens if if in northern Nevada we survey over that sphere uh, using the third one. Which is the east-west uh, uh, transect, uh, the east-west uh, traverse direction. Okay, our magnetic traverse is uh, is east-west, and maybe I should blow this up to uh, uh, you know give you uh, more of a chance of, of seeing it. Okay, so there's our um, our high at the magnetic pole with the moat on all sides of it, and here in northern Nevada in a north-south traverse magnetically. Uh, we have uh, the uh, um, on the south side of the anomaly um, is uh, is a large is a sharp positive and a broad low moat on the north side of the anomaly. We traverse across it east west, and it's just a positive anomaly centered right over the sphere. Okay, the moat is only on the north side. The, the moat is not on the west side or the east side. Okay, at the uh, magnetic equator, then we have uh, um, in a north-south profile. Okay, with horizontal lines of force. All right, we uh, we have uh, you know broad positives, you know, and a central negative. And if we survey in the east-west direction, we see that that central negative. Okay, so here's the here's the that's that's one. Situation in various places. Okay, let's concentrate now on northern Nevada. We're going to be doing, um, uh, you know, so that's uh, the second and third curves. Okay, 
depending on whether we have north-south, the second curve, or uh, east-west profiles. Of course, our, our profiles are, are not going to be perfectly magnetically north-south or east-west. They're going to be in between. Okay, so so actually, the the anomaly we'll get is going to be somewhere in between. Okay, these two. It's going to be a, like a, a a mixture, a solid solution between between those two. All right. So okay, we're looking at a uh, we're looking for a fault. Okay. What? How might we see that that fault? All right, maybe that fault has hydrothermal uh, activity along it, and that hydrothermal activity results in the dep deposition of magnetic minerals. And so uh, maybe it's a vertical sheet. Okay. So uh, northern Nevada, if we do a north-south traverse, if it's a if it's a east-west striking fault, okay. Uh, then we could do a north-south traverse across it, and um, uh, and we would get a, a sharp high and a and a low moat on the north side of it. Uh, if it's a north striking fault, and uh, um, you know, or, or north striking dike, and we do an east-west survey, then we just see a nice, uh, uh, a fairly sharp high, you know, somewhat muted but fairly sharp, uh, just over the uh, um, uh, just over the um, uh, center of it, uh, and maybe locating the fault. You know, how do we locate the fault if uh, we have a north-south traverse and an east-west striking fault? Uh, the fault is actually located under the inflection point between the high and the low moat. Okay. Now here's uh, you know magnetics power. This wide dike example. That's telling you about magnetics power as a uh, as an edge detector, and you can see that there's a little anomaly. There's symmetrical anomalies. Uh, well, not in northern Nevada. There's anti-symmetrical anomalies in a north-south profile if the dike is uh, is uh, east-west striking. If it's a north striking profile, no I'm sorry, north striking dike, east-west profile. Then you can see these highs that are kind of over the edges of the dike of the wide dike. Okay, two other possible kinds of faults in northern Nevada. Um, you know, a fault which is taking the magnetic material and faulting it down, which uh, is certainly possible. Okay, you can see the the uh, the anomalies are smaller than what we would see for the fault with two rock units. Of, you know. One with twice the magnetic uh, susceptibility, and uh, but it's the same idea. You know, you get a uh, if it's an east e striking fault uh, at the uh, in northern Nevada with um, um, with a north south traverse, and we see a high then a low on the north side. If it's a uh, an east striking fault, if it's, I'm sorry, if it's a north striking fault. Um, with a uh, east-west traverse, then it's really a muted signal, okay? And that may be what we're facing because the uh, um, uh, the strike of this fault appears to be like north um, uh, thirty west or so. So it's mostly a north striking fault, but you know, uh, north thirty west geographically, that's like north forty five. Um, West magnetically, okay, uh, in this area. So we're going to get a mixture between these two curves, and maybe some of this will be visible. All right, uh, and and you can see, uh, you know, the the situation if it's a if it's a fault with two different uh, um, uh, two different magnetic susceptibilities. Uh, the one on the uh, this curve is east west profile, so. On the west, it's twice the magnetic susceptibility as is on the east. And if it's an east uh, an east west uh, striking fault and north south profile, then again you get a high with a low um, uh, along the uh, uh, with a low along the um, um, uh, uh, along the uh, uh, on the north side. Okay, now one one orientation I have not discussed 
okay, say for this fault here, is uh, well, what what happens? Okay, what happens if you um, if you have a north striking fault, and you do a north striking profile? Well, that's not this situation here, right? This this section has uh, uh, you know this section has has uh, a fault which strikes perpendicular to the section. So, and 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 why why is that? It's like it's eliminating you know this whole sheet here is eliminating one possibility, uh, one very prominent possibility. If you do a magnetic profile along the fault, you know whatever the direction, you're probably not going to see anything. Okay. You might see something when the fault changes direction, okay, and that's going to shift the magnetic anomalies and the moats around. But yeah, you know, uh, that's why that case is not here, okay. We, uh, uh, you know, what you might see is a gradual, um, a gradual sloping interface, right? And you you'll have a very slow, very minor anomaly. Might never see it, okay? You won't see uh, what you see here, all right. So if an east, if it's an east-west striking fault, and we do an east-west um, traverse along it, no anomaly. If it's a north-south striking fault, and we do a north-south traverse along it, no anomaly, okay? Uh, you know we have curve number two here for a east-west striking fault and a north. You know, crossed by a, a traverse, which is to the north. Okay, you get a good anomaly. And uh, uh, if uh, if we have a north striking fault, and we cross it with an east-west traverse. Well, we get kind of a more dicey anomaly, but still one that we we have hope of finding. All right, so um, that is a uh, uh, an overview. Uh, um, of the uh, uh, of some eyeball methods of uh, of magnetic uh, interpretation, right? You look at the shapes of the anomalies and you try to identify. You you know, you know. Let's say you know you you've done uh, you know magnetically north striking profiles, and um, and uh, you're in northern Nevada. Okay, so then you would look at all the different lines too. And see which you know shape is most similar to what you've got, okay? And you might uh, you might be able to identify uh, what you have. I mean, all right, not a lot of difference between the narrow cylinder and the faults and the dike uh, and the uh, the dipping dike. I mean, those are very uh, or the anticline or ridge. I mean, those are those are real, uh, really difficult to uh, to distinguish, but uh, other ones like the sphere you might be able to distinguish, especially, you know, if you can look all around, um, uh, you know, in, in different directions, um, you know, basically with uh, uh, a magnetic map, you have a chance. Okay, now also the. Um, uh, the half width, okay, uh, that that also, uh, uh, you know, that also uh, for a, a magnetic sphere, you get your anomaly, you get uh, your uh, the width x prime at uh, at half the uh, the anomaly value, right? And so the uh, the depth to the center of the sphere is two times uh, the half width, okay. Um, there's also uh, just like for uh, um, uh, just like for the uh, uh, for gravity, there's this uh, uh, half slope or maximum slope method, and uh, that can give you an indication of uh, of uh, how your uh, uh, how your you know whether you're at uh, you know ten meters depth or hundred meters depth, right? That can that can really tell you. Uh, now all this makes it really important that you. You have your your magnetic anomalies constrained by more than just one point. If you see one point, you know you have a, a low point here and a low point here, and your next measurement is uh, right at the top of uh, you know you get a high point. Well, you really don't know anything. Any any anomaly that's worth interpreting has at least 
um, at least three measurements that support it. Okay, so if you see an anomaly or you start to see a magnetic gradient, you know, as you're walking along with the magnetometer, you should go back, and uh, and you should take more stations, you know, in between the ones you already took, right? Because that's going to define the width of the uh, of the anomaly, and help you with these calculations. Now I've thrown in some uh, uh, some slides about uh, uh, you know forward modeling and inverse modeling. Um, there's a lot of modeling done for uh, uh, for gravity and magnetic anomalies, and uh, it all all involves a lot of these uh, 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 this terminology, right? Um, you know our our model space. Uh, it has to do with polygons and geometries and uh, magnetic susceptibility and density uh, changes, right? So uh, um, you know, and, and constraints, the magnetization, the uh, rock properties, and then there's the data space. It's always it's 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 a good idea to uh, keep your uh, uh, keep your model and data spaces uh, well separ separated in your mind. Okay, so you know your nanotesla measurements or your milligal measurements are all um, you know they're all in the data space. Anomalies they're in the data space. Okay, slopes, derivatives they're in the data space. Okay, so uh, uh, you know we have these uh, uh, iterations we can go through, and, and we're going to do that in the gravity lab later on, uh, where we we have a model we generate. Uh, uh, the response, you know, say the the gravity response of that model, um, and then we go back and we change the model, okay, and we generate a new response, and we try to get our our response to the model, you know, to be exactly the same as our data. Well, that's also a question, you know, how exactly? What's our what's our error? What uh, you know? What are we? Uh, uh, you know, how well are we trying to match the data? Okay, so. Some terminology here and ways of thinking about uh, uh, iteration. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm not going to go too much into the uh, instrumentation, um, except to say that uh, the simplest kind of uh, your iPhone actually measures the individual uh, 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 H and Z, and then it calculates the uh, declination and uh, inclination, and uh, 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 but there's also the uh, total field, okay, and um, uh, you know the uh, uh, what's explained here is uh, how to measure the total field, uh, which is what we're measuring too. Although we're not doing it uh, uh, with proton precession, but uh, uh, the simplest uh, instruments have. Uh, uh, measure the total field with uh, proton precession, and so uh, it turns out uh, that uh, uh, you know in the hydrogen atoms in oil, they uh, uh, they precess and give a radio signal, which is at uh, uh, the number of, uh, of of gammas, which is uh, uh, you know some uh, number of nanoteslas. No, I'm sorry, gamma is a nanotesla. So for fifty thousand uh, nanotesla, we would have uh, twenty-three times fifty thousand hertz of uh, radio signal uh, out of that. Uh, uh, out of that, so uh, uh, you know that's going to be a uh, twenty-five times uh, fifty kilohertz, or twenty times fifty kilohertz is uh, going to be a megahertz, right? So you get a megahertz radio signal. Out of uh, a, a big wad of uh, of hydrogen atoms, you know, in uh, uh, in something like uh, pentane, um, that uh, um, that's in the presence of a uh, fifty thousand uh, nanotesla magnetic field. So that's how we uh, we measure uh, the strength of the magnetic field to uh, uh, to pretty good accuracy because we can count frequency, uh, you know, even at megahertz uh, up at uh, about that kind of accuracy. Okay, so that's uh, that's enough on magnetics specifically. Uh, the next lecture is going to be uh, really about uh, um, 
combining gravity magnetics and other techniques to uh, actually solve some some problems in uh, hydrology and uh, um, and resources.